Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar that we're running on monitoring your employees while they're home working. Uh, why, how, and is it legal? Um, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. I'm going to run through a few uh, quick housekeeping kind of bits and pieces and then we'll run through the topics of the uh, webinar and finally we'll have a demo and also a Q&A session uh, to cover off anything that uh, that's lingering or that you want to ask. Um, so without further ado, let's move on. So housekeeping wise, uh, questions, uh, absolutely welcome questions. It would be fantastic to get some uh, get some feedback from you in terms of how you uh, how you see yourselves using the things that we're gonna show you today. Um, so you'll see on your screen, there's a chat box on the right hand side. Um, so please enter any questions as we go along. Uh, we'll work through the questions at the end. Um, today, uh, I've actually got a handout for you. So. Uh, Bit of uh, bit of excitement. We've uh, I was speaking to our uh, we use an HR consultant, a lady called Amanda from AJ HR Solutions, and uh, she's very kindly prepared a uh, handout for us to share with you. So uh, that will be available again in that chat bar on the right hand side at the relevant point in the uh, in the webinar. So uh, please do download that, and make use of that for your businesses. Uh, the duration today I'm expecting this is going to last around about thirty minutes. Depends obviously how many questions we get um, and what we go through. I think. Probably when I give you the live demo of the uh, the productivity suite that we use and called Active Track, that might generate some questions. So, um, as I say, anything you have questions about, pop them in the chat box. We'll cover those off. Uh, and then at the end of the webinar, you'll get an email uh, 24 hours later. So tomorrow at 1 p.m., you'll get an email with the replay link. Uh, that replay link will allow you to rewatch the webinar, um, and it works ad infinitum. So you can actually share that link with people. So if you have uh, other staff members or customers, suppliers, people that you think would actually benefit from the content we're covering today, feel free to send them the replay link uh, and they can participate as well. So very quickly, I uh, want to cover off just about us. So uh, OneFix, we are a specialist company that provides managed IT support. So we look after corporate IT for companies with typically between kind of 10 and 150 staff. Uh, we would normally manage the entirety of the infrastructure, the help desk, the security, uh, sourcing of equipment, all that kind of stuff. But we can also work with in-house IT teams and we have a few clients where they have in-house teams and we work alongside them to deliver specialist skills that they don't have in-house. Um, essentially our proposition is we save our clients money and stress, we try and reduce unexpected downtime, uh, we help manage IT budgets and planning and we look after our clients and keep them secure. And we pride ourselves on the, uh, the quality of our help desk and our tech support agents. Um, about me, uh, I'm Craig Atkins. I am the MD of OneFix, so the company you just heard about. If you're a Twitter user, you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at OneFix. Um, primarily, uh, most of the tweets that come out on there are informational tweets, company information, useful things that you might want to know about the IT industry. Uh, and occasionally useless insights from me, but uh, it's a it's a bit of a mixture, but uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter if you're on Twitter. Likewise, LinkedIn, uh, if you're on LinkedIn, do find me on LinkedIn, Craig Atkins, and get connected. Okay, so the agenda for today, um, we're going to run through what is employee productivity monitoring. So for those of you that aren't familiar with this sort of thing, uh, I'm gonna run through what, what it is and how it works. Um, we're gonna cover off why you might want to actually monitor your employees. So um, you know, some of the bits and pieces to why, why, why would you want to do that? Um, how you should approach this with them. This is kind of the, the part about being a little bit more ginger and how you approach monitoring with employees. Um, now, obviously, in monitoring people does bring in legal and ethical complications. So we're going to cover off the legalities and the ethics of monitoring people. Um, then I'm going to give you a quick demo of a platform called Active Track. Active Track is a product that we actually use in house. So we use it here at OneFix. Um, to monitor employee productivity. So that's part and parcel of why I'm talking to you about this today because we've done it, we've implemented it, uh, and I can share some success stories with you on that as well. Um, but it'd be great to show you the tool that we use and just show you the kind of stuff you can do because it's it's so much easier to demo it and display it than it is to talk about it. Uh, and then at the end, we'll have a Q&A. So again, any questions, you can pop those in and we will cover those off at the end. Okay, um, so first off, what is employee productivity monitoring? Well, um, it can cover a lot of things actually, but essentially what we're gonna be talking about is uh, from the IT and technical aspect, what is employee productivity monitoring? So uh, we want to use a suite of tools that can essentially interrogate what people are doing on their computers and on their systems uh, and kind of classify whether what they're doing is productive use of time or an unproductive use of time. 
Um, and this is something that varies company to company. So again, you'll find that with different productivity monitoring solutions, some of them have different ways to understand and classify what people are doing. Um, the tool we use is again, this tool called Active Track that has some built-in classifications, but actually allows you to be pretty granular with how you decide what is and isn't productive. And the idea behind this is that you can then implement it and you will get a very good visibility in terms of uh, how time is being spent on the machine. So one of the things, and the reason why this kind of, this webinar essentially came about in the first place was we've had a few clients asking us about um, their remote workers and asking us to find out what time did they connect the VPN connection? What time did they turn the PC on today? And these kind of things are really, really rudimentary methods of measures of productivity monitoring because sure, I could tell you what time your uh, member of staff turned their laptop on, but without the right tools in place, I couldn't really tell you what they were doing with the time that they had the laptop on. Um, there used to be a bit of a kind of a, a running joke with people working from home that uh, they would connect into Teams or dial into a, a session and just leave it idle and sit there and uh, go off and make a cup of tea or go and put the washing on or whatever. So um, the uh, using this kind of uh, monitoring software, we can actually dig in and grab more information about actually what's happening and uh, who's doing what and whether they're doing things productively. So employee productivity monitoring is essentially going to be a suite of software and tools that will allow you to understand whether time is being spent productively or not. So why might you want to monitor your employees? Well, okay, we've, we kind of touched on that a minute ago, but the main reason why you would want to monitor them is actually, I think, from a perspective of performance management. Um, so other people have other ideas. There are some people that want to monitor their employees because they essentially their management style is ruling with, a, with an iron rod and they actually want to keep on top of what people are doing. Um, I think the benefits behind employee monitoring actually it gives you some really useful information for understanding the workload and the workflow. So actually, if you're having to recruit more staff or understand the staffing workload issues, you can use the employee monitoring to help you with that and help you understand that. Um, and it also generates some useful information for uh, business metrics, so business development and kind of KPI metrics. Um, and at a time now when there's, you know, people, more and more people working from home, I think it's... Uh, it's a very handy kind of way of a understanding what the employees are doing in their time. Because the thing is with home working, we have to be more flexible. We have to understand that people have distractions, things that will take place. Uh, actually, people typically will work more flexible hours or different hours to what they work in the daytime. So the uh, productivity monitoring will help you understand that. Um, and it will also help you identify those people that possibly are swinging the lead. So you will always get one or two. So uh, this tool will help to identify them, but also I think and we'll cover this off in a little while, but once you get the employee buy-in and the understanding, it's it's like an honesty check. It kind of keeps people on the, on track, essentially, by knowing that they've got something that's, uh, that's keeping an eye on them. So uh, that's why we think we should monitor your employees. So how should you approach it with them? This is a this is the tricky one because it's uh, you don't want to upset people. You don't want to. Um, make them think you're running some sort of spy state where you're really you know, interrogating and keeping an eye on them. Um, I personally think that the easiest way to approach this is to bring it uh, bring it in as almost like a KPI measure. So um, internally at OneFix, we've used the productivity monitoring as part and parcel of a tool that um, kind of helps us run things like one-to-one. -one. So when we run our one-to-one -one meetings, we can look at uh, technicians and sort of say, look, actually, you know what, you had a compared to last week, you had a more productive week, you had a similarly productive week. Uh, and I would say within kind of a month or two of us implementing that, actually, the stats are pretty steadily solid. So actually, we don't have to refer to it quite so often. We more often now pull those stats in for annual reviews, six monthly reviews, um, or if we do have a performance management problem and something that we need to address, that's when we can then refer back to the information. So. Um, I think it's very important to approach this with staff in the right manner. So actually letting them know that not only is it for the company's benefit to understand what's happening, but it's actually, uh, you know, it's going to be beneficial to them because actually you're going to use that as part and parcel of their, their development program and their employee development program. Um, and personally, when we implemented this, we didn't, um, we didn't actually get too much pushback from staff. We were expecting that maybe some people might gripe and grumble. Actually, they were very accepting of that. Um, and again, I think it also depends how you then use the information going forwards. You know, if you start beating people over the head with it, then it's going to quickly turn sour. If you use it in a productive manner, I think there's huge benefits to be had. 
So when you come to bring this sort of thing in, um, you need to think about um, you know what you need in place legally to cover this. Um, and this is where I had a quick chat with um, with kind of HR and found out you know what you need. Um, so one of the key things you need to do is to ensure that you have an HR policy in place that covers the uh, the monitoring. Your current HR policy may already have this in place. Um, typically, it would reside within an IT policy in in a general business kind of sense. Um, so this is a good chance to check your policies now and make sure that you have something there. Um, so you may already have it in mind, be covered by a policy also on something like CCTV or surveillance. Some some company policies have a general blanket kind of clause that covers the uh, employer's right to uh, surveil the employees. Um, so this is probably where you need to have a little bit of specialist HR advice or turn to your HR team or department uh, and double check whether you've got this covered in terms of what you've already got. Uh, if you don't have a policy at the moment, then well, now's a great time to make one. Um, we have got this uh, free temporary home working policy. So uh, Amanda from AJ HR Solutions, who is our, uh, say she's our HR advisor. Um, she's very kindly prepared a home working policy. Um, I've just shared that with you. That should be available in the chat box now on the right hand side um, for you to download. Um, this kind of covers off a whole bunch of stuff and it, obviously it's um it's a general home working policy but there are some bits and pieces in there or a clause in there about kind of uh the employers may use you know tools or technology to you know to monitor productivity or monitor your uh, performance um so if you haven't got something at the moment please please take this tool uh talk it please use it uh, uh, again amanda's given us permission to you know offer this to you and for you to share this with people that you know um her details are on there if you need any help customizing the policy so please do um obviously if you're implementing this as a remote working policy then you need to have a little think about when you come back to the office whether you want to bring this forward um again i would suggest that you once you have these kind of tools in place you probably do i think it's very useful the thing is that uh, the workforce is becoming more flexible now so again if you're working from things like laptops then having that monitoring in place means that you can keep track of what's going on yeah regardless of where your staff are and what they do um and uh, yeah, so I think you need to have a think about how you would transfer that as and when you uh, move back into the office and say, look at putting that into an IT policy or having a policy refresh at that point. From an ethical point of view, um, is it ethical? Now, this is, this is the bit that I think, depending on your outlook, is the bit that's harder to quantify. Um, I think it really depends on how you use the tools and the data. Um, personally, I don't have a problem with doing this as long as everybody understands that it's happening. I, I absolutely would not agree with putting in place employee monitoring on a covert basis. I think, uh, you know, regardless of if you've snuck the clause into an HR policy and then you turn this stuff on in the background, I personally think that's quite shady and underhanded. So I, would, uh, I, I wouldn't really go along with that. I would expect that, uh, you know, it should be something that's constructively used for employees. So um, as I say, use it to, as a KPI type measure, use it to provide key metrics for your reviews. Um, don't use it solely to punish. That's the real key thing with these kind of tools. Don't use them as something to, you know, hammer people over the head with. You've got to make it kind of uh, beneficial for everybody to be using it. Um, and there's a kind of note I've put here, which will make more sense when I show you the tooling in a minute. But um, you understand that being idle or passive doesn't mean that somebody isn't working. Um, the problem with these kind of tools and reports is it's really easy to kind of look at something and go, jump to the wrong conclusion essentially so you can see from the data that well that's funny that person's been idle for 20 minutes mm, what does that mean does that mean they're not working um legitimately you know they, they could have been on the loo they could have been making a phone call where they're not moving the mouse around and doing things on the computer um they could be team meetings staff meetings uh performance reviews you know it's quite easy again when you look back over the data that um especially when you're looking back maybe a month or you're looking back over a previous uh, quarter or something like that you can start pulling things out and um you know you won't remember what happened on those days so you can't read too much into that i think it's um it's just very important to understand that there's a lot of nuances to what you'll see from the data so it's understanding uh how to interpret that and how to do it um constructively so you know as a business owner i think it's a case of utilizing the tools appropriately uh, to provide accurate visibility of staff and their productivity uh, to help you achieve business goals. Uh, and as I say, I think it's uh, where we see it being very useful is to understand, um, you know, just if the workloads are increasing, decreasing what's happening along with other different tools that we use. So 
so I'm going to give you a live demo. So hopefully this works well. I'm going to share one of my screens now. So just bear with me for a second. Okay. And what I might do is I might just shrink my head down a little bit in the corner. Let me just keep out of the way a bit more. There we go. Right. So I've logged in already just to save a step. This is uh, something called Active Track. This is our dashboard. Um, and this is actually data from our team. So um, I've, I've had a chat with them, made sure that it's okay, that they're happy for me to share this. Um, again, we don't really have any secrets here. This is all, um, you know, this is our data, but it's nothing that's, um, yeah, there's nothing that's secret here. Um, so what you're seeing here, this is the, uh, essentially the front page once you've logged into something called Active Track. Um, and normally this would give you kind of a, an overview here, but I'm, this area where it says quick stats would give you an overview of your current week or last week. Um, and real time would give you an idea of what's happening at the moment. Um, now we have Active Track running actually on our office systems, uh, and obviously at this moment in time we're not in the office. We've decided not to deploy this on home systems, um, primarily actually because with our workers there, um, we've come up with a policy that allows them to work from home using their own computers, and I don't want to monitor what people do on their own computers. Again, I don't feel that's right, so I think this is another thing to think about when you're pushing this kind of thing out. Uh, if you want to deploy it, I think it should be on corporate devices. So again, it's a it's another reason to have a think about whether you want to supply your staff with corporate owned devices if they are working from home. Um, but because I haven't got real time information here, what we're going to do is I'm going to dig through some previous data that we've got from um, yeah previous times, so I can show you how this works. So straight away, you'll see in the quick stats we've got kind of two areas here. We have an area for websites and we have an area for applications, and it's broken down time into productive unproductive, uh, productive and unproductive, and also undefined. So the way the software works is there's an agent, you see a big blue download button here for download the agent. This is something that runs on the computer and it literally monitors. So it keeps an eye on what's running and it keeps an eye on what the foreground window is. So that means that um, in this instance where I'm presenting, the active track system will actually know that my foreground window, the, the window that I have live on the screen is a website and it would know that it's active track and that I'm in a browser. So um, those kind of, uh, you, again, we used to see in the past, you'd see people that would have a, I don't know, let's say they're working in Excel, they'd have an Excel window there on the screen ready to go. Um, they would minimize it down, they would sit there browsing BBC News, and when the boss came along, they would pop the Excel window back up. It was, uh, in fact, there used to be hotkeys for it, they used to call it boss mode, or you could bring up something to look like you were busy. Um, that doesn't fool this system because this system will look at what's actually live and what you're focusing or clicking or typing into. So it will pick up the times that you bring Excel up and it will monitor that, but actually it will uh, also know that, you know, actually 90% of that time you've spent on BBC or we've spent on YouTube or whatever. And again, I'll show you how we drill into that. But essentially we can see here that, you know, we haven't got too much to worry about here over the course of what we're looking at a week's worth of data. You know, website usage, we've got some that's unproductive, we've got a tiny bit of unproductive application use, but in all honesty, that doesn't phase me. That looks looks fine. I'm happy with that. We break down here. We've got uh, we can break the graph down so we can see days of the week and how it works. Um, this is general cumulative time for the employees that you're covering. So we're covering seven members of staff here. So actually, this is a cumulative total. Um, and you see, we've got this block here called passive as well. Um, now, passive used to be called idle within this tool, but they've changed it to passive because I think idle was misleading, people thinking that people weren't doing anything. Um, and again, passive would just be that something's not happening on the machine. So someone stepped away, someone's gone off to make a cup of tea, someone's left the PC on, um, one of those bits and pieces. Um, and we can see on the right-hand side, we've got users and groups. Um, and here we can see basically what users we've got. And in blue, we see how much productive time they've got. Um, and Red, we've got their unproductive time. Yellow, we've got their idle time. So we can probably assume here that actually Ben's potentially left his computer on actually and hasn't turned it off at night or he's been out for a lot of meetings. Uh, likewise with Tom, very similar type of thing. Um, we've also got the ability within the tool, the tool will take screenshots. So uh, over the period of time, it will, in the background, it will take screenshots of what's going on. And you can set up, and I'll show you, we can set up rules around that. So actually, if you're concerned about um, if you're concerned about employees use of, say, Microsoft Teams, and you think actually they're probably spending all the time chatting to somebody on Teams, 
you can set up an alert or a rule that says if they're in Teams and it's a chat window, then you want to take a screenshot. So actually you can start to build up screenshot data. Now again, personally, although the tool gathers this, we would rarely use this. This actually probably comes into the fore more if we actually have a productivity issue and we want to look at that. Um, but the screenshots are there and they're gathered. The tool also then breaks down uh, applications and sites. So this is a bit more like the kind of reporting you would get from a firewall, but uh, it will tell you what the top application is. So in our case, 33% uh, of the time, uh, our top application is something called ConnectWise, which is actually it's our internal ticketing system. So we'd expect that to be up the top, followed by Screen Connect, which is our remote support tool. So over 50% of the time of use of applications on our work computers are spent directly in work software, followed by Microsoft Teams, followed by Outlook, followed by a web browser. So actually, you know, that's pretty good. I, again, I wouldn't be worried about that. Likewise with support and the sites here, it will break down type the, the different sites that people are on. And you can filter these out. So actually, if you want to say, well, what unproductive applications have people been using? Well, actually, there's a tiny bit of time in something called LED panel, and there's some time in Spotify, 14 minutes. Um, so you can drill that down into productive and unproductive. Same with your websites. So again, bit of YouTube time, bit of TripAdvisor, you know, that kind of stuff. Again, I'm not too worried about that. We can look at categories. So we can see here, uh, again, you, each, each activity or website can be categorized. So you can start to see the usage of the types of applications. So for us as you know, IT company, you'd expect admin and IT would be the highest usage and absolutely it is. Followed that by email and chat and messaging around the same. We use Teams a lot in-house, for so Teams is heavily used. Um, in-house tools, Microsoft Office. So again, you have a profile there and you can switch this between applications and websites. And then you have this area here where it says pending classification. Now this is where I was saying about classifying your tools. Um, if the software picks up things that it doesn't know what they are, it will ask you to classify them. So you can see, uh, let me find a good example. It's a bright gauge, here we go. This is a tool that we use for our internal dashboarding. Um, so we've already marked it as productive, but actually it's not categorized at the moment. So I'm gonna categorize that as admin and IT. There we go, that's categorized. And likewise, you'll find things in here where it might be breathe HR. So that's our HR system. So again, we'll go on here, we can choose HR. And we start to then get a more accurate breakdown as to the categories and the use of time. And likewise, productive and unproductive, um, we can set in here whether something is a productive application or unproductive. So if we've got something in here that we spot and we think we don't want that, then we can take it in there and say, oh, there you go, Papa John's. <laughs> that's a difficult one because for us, actually, we're probably ordering work pizzas. Um, but you could say that's unproductive if that was actually somebody doing their online shopping, set that as unproductive, and you'd be able to track that. And you can do that from here. So where you've got time that's undefined, so websites here, eight hours of undefined time. If you wish to do so, you can click into that undefined time and you have to get a list. So you can see here, we've got this website. We've had three hours of time on this website and the system doesn't know what it is. itskillsmanagement.mysharepoint.com. Well, I don't know what that is. Sounds like it's probably training related. So if I click open link, it's gonna take me to it because it's SharePoint, I probably have to log in. Yeah, so I can't actually see what that is, but I'm gonna make the assumption that that is actually somebody doing some training. So over here, I can update the classification of that and I can set that to when it loads. Here we go. I can basically classify that. Uh, I haven't done this for a while, but yeah, somewhere on here, I'll be able to choose what it is and whether it's... Hmm, okay. <laughs> Always the danger of the live demo. But yes, you can go through and you can choose what, what classification that is, and it will appear somewhere in this list here to classify as well. Um, to drill into an actual employee, if we want to find out about somebody, um, let's take Ben Taylor. We can click into them. So everything's drilled, you can drill down into. So here we're, so we're looking at a working week. Um, and what we've done here is as we've clicked on Ben, we've now got a stat graph. So this shows us now uh, the days of the week, the time, and we get these, it's probably difficult to see there because it's probably blurring, but there's tiny little lines between these little areas of time. And each one of these is a five minute interval. Uh, and we can see if we hover over those intervals, it shows us what the longest activity was in that five minutes. Uh, so if we take something there, we've got an unproductive. Okay, the longest activity there was on Reddit. Uh, and Reddit is a kind of a web and uh, chat blogging type site. And actually it's, it's arguable whether it's productive because for us in IT, there's quite a lot of useful stuff on Reddit. So. Um, 
but you can see here we can see different areas and the yellows will be idles so you can straight away start to see how people's time is being spent and there we go we've got a bit more unproductive on these ones a bit of youtube a bit of reddit towards the end of the day um so again what we typically will do is the the software itself will produce a report so weekly you get a productivity report and uh we just use that as kind of an overview. You can look at how much ratio of time is being spent. And again, this is where I was cautioning about kind of reading too much into things, because if you look at the, uh, if you look at that kind of list there, you'd assume that obviously Ben's the most productive, Tom's the least productive. That's not necessarily the case. There's people have got days holiday. There's people that aren't logged in on certain days. So I think when we looked at, uh, was it Ben first off? There was a, no, there's a few people on here who certainly didn't have a full day of time. So, uh, so Lee, for example, here on the 7th, there's nothing there at all. So clearly a day off or she wasn't working. Um, so you just have to be a little bit careful when you're interpreting the stats, but it's a really useful way of seeing kind of how much productive time is spent. And if you take the time to classify things as unproductive, that's where you can then also really drill into that. Um, you can also, I need to find where it is. I'll see if I can find it in a second. Yeah, here we go, working out. So if you've got someone who's a... Uh, a contractor or a time-based employee working hours is incredibly useful now I've loaded this up and suddenly it looks like a load of bump because it's pulling in information from our network but if I filter this down to the user that I want to see uh, let's use lead because lead does work on time and timesheets um, what it will do for that is it will show us each day when her first activity was and her last activity and it gives us an idea of the total time so actually we can kind of that whole thing of when people have started and stopped and clocked on and clocked off you can start to pull that in from the figures you get here. So it's really useful when you've got those people that are um, clocking in and out remotely that you can actually get a feel for when they first started doing something and when they last started, or when they finished doing something, should I say. Um, and again, it will break down the time as to whether it's productive, unproductive, passive. Um, but that time working time hours report is really useful. And you can, again, you can pull these down for periods of time, ranges, last year, last month. Um, so if I looked at, uh, Productivity, I could drop this back and say the entirety of last year. And it's going to rumble along with a little line at the top and eventually it's probably take a while because there's a bit of data. Ooh, there we go. Um, so you can kind of, again, even this is very aggregated across a year, but you can see we have, almost have a kind of a standard level of productivity there. So uh, again, if you were looking at this over a month, you could drill it in and find those times when you suddenly go, why is there, you know, why is there a real slump on that particular day? Let's, let's dig in and find out and again, click in see what it tells us um, and actually we're just looking at Lee here at the moment so again we could switch that back to all users and see particular users and what's going on with them um, so real time is out. I can't really cover this off now because we don't have anybody running real time but when this is on this will show you all of the people uh, who are running the agent at the moment what they have currently got on the screen so what the title of the active window is what the executable is or what web URL they're on so this will give you a real good idea a snapshot glance exactly what everybody's doing at that point in time what websites they're on or what they're doing um, the screenshots um, this is where we can look at um, essentially the latest screenshots for the people so this was the latest one gathered from Lee's machine in fact she has been in doing a few bits and pieces in the office occasionally um, on her own so she's that's the last screenshot that was gathered from her machine yesterday 5:30. Um, you could then drop back and actually if you go into the history you can start to drill back and actually choose a particular date and time and again when this loads up in a second you can choose productivity so actually if you've classified your applications from websites you could drop down and say actually I want to know unproductive and see exactly what's been going on um, but we can see that there is Again, you pull in the window title, what application it was, so you can drop in and see that. And you can filter on this. So if you if you know, for example, that you really want to dig into, you know, Dropbox usage, you can look at that. That brings us down to, let's have a quick look at the activity log, because that's going to give you quite a lot of information. So the activity log, in fact, let me drop this back to a period of time that's going to be useful. Bear with me. Let's go back to 1st of January to there. There we go. And we'll look at all the users. So what we get on the activity log here is this is a running log of everything that gets picked up of changes and information. So as machines are clocking in and things are happening, we start to get the information through here in the log in date order. And you can filter the log. 
and actually it will pick up certain things like USB devices. So if we still search there for USB, uh, we can see that oh, you go, on the computer workshop five, uh, Ben Taylor plugged the USB drive in at that point, and it will. And if you were worried about that, you could then dig in and see what was going on and what happened. If there's a little screenshot icon here, that means that there's a captured screenshot of that. So here we go. This is this is actually class in theory is unproductive time. We can see well, what was that. Let's click and see. And there we go. We can see it's actually looking at some reviews of something, and that may or may not have been work related. It's difficult to tell. I would suspect it probably is. It looks like it's PC related. Then it's looking at some reviews on the <laughs> on PCs. Looks like it's uh, a rubbish computer by the look of it. Um, so there you go. So that kind of gives you an idea. You can start to build these rules up. Um, and you can set in place a whole load of um, things called alarms. So again, I don't think we have much here. We've got a few different alarms and triggers you can turn on and off. Uh, I think there's some pre-built ones in here for like title bar contains porn. It's not going to be that much use for you, but there you can build these in. So we uh, and what you can do with these is you can build alerts that will then turn on a more regular screen capture or turn on a video recording of the screen. So again, if you have concerns around particular programs, you can create an alert that will start the screen capturing and start to record more information to allow you to drill in and, uh, and interrogate that. Um, so I think there's really two uses to the tool. The first one is really to get that whole productivity picture. And I think that is the, you know, the real useful part really is to understand that productivity, people when they're on, when they're off, what's happening, how they're using the machines, what's going on. And then when you have particular performance cases or you have particular um, you know, employee issues, should we say, let's say you've got an employee that you're concerned about, but you're actually, you know, you're putting them onto gardening leave or you're, you know, you, you're actively performance managing them. Um, you may want to set up some alerts or some more information around that and actually drill more into what they're doing and what they're using. Um, and, you know, this tool can be, it can obviously be used for good. And so we, I would recommend it's the you know, data and the information is pulled out and used for performance management. Um, but you could also use it, uh, I say from a negative perspective, you can use it obviously to build a case to, I suppose, uh, dismiss somebody on the basis of misconduct if you're monitoring the things they're doing and it's completely unproductive. So, um, but I think initially the tool will give you the visibility to understand how much time is being spent usefully and how much time is being spent idly. Um, and I think it's one of those things at the moment with lots of remote workers, I think it's a case of being very, um, liberal with your interpretation of the tool. I think, um, I say with the fact that people are flexing on and off, I think uh, it's definitely not a case of being heavy handed at this point in time. I think getting the tool out there and getting a better understanding of what people are doing is very useful. Um, the deployment is very straightforward. Once you've got this installed, um, if you've got a, what's called an active directory, which most companies will have, which is a way of logging on and off the computers, essentially if you all use different usernames and passwords, then this will pick that up. Um, and you can see we've got different groups. A lot of this stuff is picked out from different places, but you, these are our, essentially our Windows users that we've got monitors. Um, and you can download the agent. Um, if you are a client of ours or you have an IT company, they can push this through to the machines uh, through the tool sets that they use. So uh, the installation is very quick and very straightforward. And once the agent's pushed out, immediately you'll start to pull real-time information. So the minute that this gets installed, the real-time stuff will start to populate. So you can start to see immediately what's happening and what people are doing. And then obviously the, the longer term data will build up over time. Um, so I mean, I think that's, that's a pretty good overview of the tool. There is blocking capability in here as well. Personally, we don't use this because we use, you know, in more of an intelligent type firewall um, situation, but actually you can put web domains in here and actually put them into a block list. So if you particularly want to, you know, just type in their Facebook and put block, it will block it from the browser. Um, in all honesty, you're better with a proper filtering solution if that's what you want to do. But if you want to utilize that as part and parcel, it will absolutely work for you. Um, and you can literally pull, I'll say, reports on all sorts of things, risk level as well. So you can classify things based on where you, where you deem them to be a risk to the business and run reports on that. Again, um, some of this stuff is newer things. So I think risk level, we haven't actually implemented ourselves because that was a fairly new addition to the tool. Um, they, they are adding functionality and features quite often. Um, and yeah, you can export all of these things out to, uh, you know, Word documents, Excel. If you've got, um, 
if you've got the need to do something like Power BI, if you're running much bigger business dashboarding and intelligence, there are packages available that allow you to export all of that data out to Power BI or I think they call it Google Data or there's, there's quite a few different data kind of exports that you can pull this into and filter it and bring it into other tools and dashboards. Um, looks like on the whole, our usage of it is to pull in these kind of general overviews using the KPI reports, um, set up the email that comes out on a regular basis to, uh, and you can break this down to managers. So you can have managers having reports on their team members for productivity as well. So, um, yeah, I think it's a fantastic tool for performance reviews and understanding what's going on. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And I'm going to jump back quickly into our presentation just to wrap things up. Let me see if I can turn that back on. Okay. So uh, the next thing to ask, obviously, if anybody's got any specific questions, um, please pop them in the chat window now, and uh, I'll cover those off in a second. Uh, if you're interested in using this tool set and you'd like to find out more, I'm pretty sure there's a trial available. I should have checked, I didn't actually, but I'm pretty sure we can get a trial for you. Um, if not, we can certainly help you implement it. It's very straightforward. Um, so if you're obviously if you're already a client, just reach out to us on the help desk and we can look at this for you. Uh, if you don't currently work with us, please drop me a line. My email address is on screen, craig.atkins at one-fix.com. Um, many, many thanks to Amanda from AJHR Solutions for putting together that um, that home worker policy pack, um, which is the word document that you can go and take away and utilize for your home worker policies. So if you haven't already downloaded that, say it's on the right hand side now, so you can download. Um, Amanda's available for HR advice and support, uh, AJHR Solutions. She's Amanda at ajhrsolutions.co.uk. Um, do we have any questions? Yeah, we've got a question from Hazel Tiffany. Um, so Hazel's asked, uh, can you link this to mobile devices and show that someone spent X amount of hours on the PC and spent X amount of time working on emails on their phone? That is a very good question. Um, as far as I'm aware, no, you can't. Um, I'm just gonna have a quick look now. The, they do have agents for different packages. So they have a, an agent for Windows, they have an agent for Mac. So for Mac users, they cover those. And they have an agent for Chrome. So if you have staff that are using Chromebooks or Chrome browser as their kind of operating system, you can link with that. But from a mobile perspective, no, they don't. Um, I think you potentially, I will ask the question, I think potentially there would be the possibility of doing this for people that have Android devices. Um, for Apple devices like uh, iOS, uh, you wouldn't be able to do that typically because Apple are very, very restrictive of the information that they allow out from the phone. Um, there are other mobile device management tools. So there are things that you can link in for kind of corporate management of phones that will give you some indication of what's happening in terms of uh, you know where the phone is, what's going on with it. In terms of the, the deep level of monitoring like you would get from this tool, then I think again, you'll struggle with that. Um, there's also that kind of whole thing around bring your own device and you know again if it's a personal phone you would i think you really would struggle to get employee by and to put any kind of monitoring onto their device um if it's a corporate phone then obviously you've got more choice to do that um and typically i have i have worked with one particular client where they did have a level of monitoring on, on phones and they were actually on android devices but they had done what's called uh root the device so that means that they kind of they broke into the device, took away the kind of the Google Play limitations and uh, got access to more of the device so they can install this kind of tool on there and they were providing those phones. So it's not insurmountable, there would be ways to do it, but um, as standard, no, the tool won't let you do that. Um, but certainly from a PC and a laptop point of view, it absolutely will. Um, but I say, I think, again, this is where you would want to be putting it onto uh, corporate devices and uh, I think you'll struggle again to get employees permission to put this onto their private machines just because it's, you know, it kind of is a breach of privacy, certainly from the point of view of um, pulling in the um, the information. Um, and yeah, Hazel said thanks. I just wasn't sure if we could link that to the Office 365 login. Um, we can, so I mean, with Office 365, it is, again, depending on which plans you have, it's possible to look at uh, what's called Azure Active Directory. So this is getting into something completely different, a little bit more complicated, but we can pull in login and log out logs from Azure. So there are ways to monitor uh, when people have turned essentially their email on and off. Um, but it's very noisy because the thing is with Office 365, lots and lots of apps and devices log into that. So when you have a, on a mobile, you have something like, you know, you've got Teams on there, you've got your email consistently checking in the background, you've got 
Word and Excel, you'll see loads and loads and loads of logins. So, I mean, I could check our Azure and I'd probably see logins all throughout the middle of the night. And again, if you looked at that, you'd think that people are working through the night. They're not. It's the devices just doing things in the background. So it really is quite difficult to drill that down, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, no, that's a tricky one, I'm afraid. A bit more difficult. Um, doesn't look like we've got any other questions. So thank you, everybody. I'm afraid we've, yeah, we've got a few minutes over time. Apologies for that. Uh, I thought it was going to be about 30 minutes, but uh, I wanted to give you a good run through of the tool. Um, I hope you found that really useful. Uh, so if you... Um, if you'd like more information, you'd like a one-to-one -one demo, or you want to dig into this, or you want to look at deploying it, uh, do drop me a line. I'll be happy to help. I uh, hope you found this really useful. When you get the webinar replay link, please do share this with anybody else that you think would find it useful. And um, keep an eye out. Uh, every Wednesday, we run Webinar Wednesday, so there'll be a different webinar topic. Um, and uh, yeah, look out for the hashtags, follow social media, and I will see you hopefully next Wednesday. Thank you very much.